Today's washer and dryer units are a lot bigger than they were 15 or 20 years ago. The bigger size is convenient, but that also means you're going to have to try and fit a bigger dryer in a smaller, older space. The width of our new machine at 27 inches is the same as the old one, so that's not a problem. But the depth is 30 inches compared to 25 inches on the old units. So that extra five or six inches was taken up by this dryer vent and that won't fit behind the new dryer at 30 inches. So we've decided to use the bottom vent on the new dryer and in order to do that, we have to raise it up. So we could either put it on a pedestal, but the new pedestals don't allow for bottom venting. So our next solution is to just go ahead and build our own pedestal out of plywood and lumber. The advantage to that is the total cost for the project is about $125 compared to $350 per unit for the manufactured ones that match your washer and dryer. It's quite a savings. You also want the doors to open so that it's convenient to go from the washer to the dryer. You can reverse the door on the dryer, but not on the washer. And that's so that you can stack them one above each other and have the doors open the same direction. Our solution was to build a pedestal base out of two by fours, kind of like small walls that'll have room for drawers under each appliance that'll have a depth of about 22 inches, leaving room for the dryer vent to come up behind. We had an additional problem where our propane comes in that it's right where the center comes back. So we had to build a structure that would allow the propane to remain where it is and we'll attach the back to the wall with this stud that's at the back of the frame. Did the same thing on the end where the dryer vent comes in where the 2x4 frame wouldn't quite work around that so we left it just completely open at the bottom and it's supported again by the stud that's going to be attached to the wall. To keep the inside of the drawers neat where you've got plywood pieces that will fit in place on each side of the box, leaving it open in the back so that we can access the dryer vent and be able to hook that up while everything's in place. Um, this will allow us to attach our soft closed drawer runners on either side and uh, they're also a full extension so that we can pull the drawers all the way out. Our face frame is made out of poplar that we're going to be painting that's going to tuck underneath the front piece that sits on top of it. We've put it together with pocket screw construction. Uh, it's pretty basic. And as you can see, it's a little bit long. So in order to figure out exactly how long it needs to be, I'll just take it and flip it over. Put it against the door and we can mark and I could just do this. And that'll mark our length. I decided on 9 inch drawer openings, which gives us a full height for our pedestal of about 12 inches. The standard ones are between 10 to 15 inches, with the commercial ones coming in at 15. But that would make a really high top to our appliances. And nine inches is big enough so that you can actually crawl into that opening to be able to attach your dryer vent. See, I've got chalk marks on here. It cleans up really easy with just alcohol. I have the drawer laid out as it's going to go together with the bottom groove around to the bottom. I like to number each of the corners so that I make sure that I'm matching up the correct um, corner piece so that even though this is a side, I don't try and match it up over here because when you cut dovetails by hand, there can be some slight discrepancies. I'm going to number these. This is one, two, three, four, five.
If you're fortunate enough to have one of these saws, they're really great. Um, gives you the a depth stop for the dovetail distance. It does have measurement marks on it, um, but I kind of like just getting the depth set by moving my gauge down. <laughs> So we're gonna make a hole for the dryer vent and for the gas line to come up through this base. And we're using a Woodpecker's variable router jig, a one inch bushing with a half inch bit. So that just makes our hole a quarter inch bigger all around than what we want to cut. I think we should have used a jigsaw. <laughs> We're using hard metal ducting instead of the flexible stuff because it's um, a little bit better. And in order to achieve the double angles going into the dryer, um, we're using two adjustable 90 degree elbows to uh, bring it over and then up into the dryer. And this part is from the dryer kit and I can slide that in or out to get the <laughs> to get the uh, correct distance to the dryer itself. We're going to put our handles on our drawer fronts. The drawers are 24 inches long which makes it a convenient 12 inches to the center of the drawer. We'll be using this Rockler jig it has this adjustable bar that can go up and down and give you a different offset from the edge of your drawer. We want the handles to be centered both horizontally and vertically on our drawer. The rail is two and a half inches and that means our center is at one and a quarter inches. We've also discovered that our instructions say three and three quarters inches or 96 millimeters, three and three quarter inch slot, and we line it up with the holes on the handle, doesn't quite match up. So that's an approximate English measurement. The 96 millimeter is the hole size we want to use. This line is one inch down from the edge. So if we put the bar at two and a quarter inches down, okay. 
We're going to be drilling from the front of the drawer to the back so that we don't mess up the finish on the front. Set the rockler jig right at 12. And then I'll use a centering punch to mark the 96 millimeter. And we can drill from the front to the back, and then we'll countersink on the back. Straight. And we'll countersink on the back side. original countersink bit was too small for the screw head the screw head to fit into so we went to a 12 we're going to attach our fronts to the drawers and we've decided that we're going to put the drawers drawer fronts 3 quarters of an inch above the height of the drawer. That'll give us um, about a one quarter of an inch gap from the top of the drawer to the underside of the top shelf. The hole is oversized so that these screws will pretty much go through those and it'll draw the front tight in. And we'll clamp the drawer front matching up the center of the drawer or the center of the drawer front. It's kind of slow now. So it's important to have the two slides balanced. Oops. Yeah, our problem was that this slide is back a little bit compared to the other one. And so the drawer doesn't want to close all the way on this side. <laughs> 